HQ podcast. Today, I'm very excited. We've got the lovely Sarah Brooks as our guest. Uh, no, 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 no. That is not what's happening today. Uh, what's happening today? I'm, uh, I'm confused. You're uh, going to be in the hot seat, mate. Is so. that right? Okay. <laughs> Definitely not me. So, um, <laughs> Well, we'll see how we go. <laughs> yeah. So shall we jump in? I think so. Definitely. All right. So welcome, I guess, first of all. Thank you. Um, Tell us a little bit about you, for those who don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, um, so I, uh, I'm Michael, and I've um, been in real estate now for, I think this is my officially 17th year in real estate. Mm-hmm. Um, grew up in a, in a family um, business, obviously. Uh, real estate is, it, it's funny looking back, I don't really know where my career started in some ways because you're just growing up around it and it's all you've known. Um, but my career actually first started, I actually started in WA and then um, I spent about 18 months over there. I was a personal assistant and then became a real estate sales consultant over there and then came back in uh, early 2008 to join the family business, which was back when it was Pope Michke First National back then. And the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been a bit of a... Um mad week tell us about what's been happening i'm sure the people have seen but give us a little bit of an insight into our rebrand and obviously uh becoming an independent agency yeah look it's an amazing feeling uh as much as look we we joke and we have a lot of banter but we know behind the scenes this has been something that we've wanted to do for quite some time and i'm just so pumped and proud of our team to be here for this moment so we are officially nitschke real estate and you know, like the family business started um, 22 years ago in the year 2000. Um, and how old are you now? I'm 22. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm 34 at the time of recording. So uh, I've been around for a lot of it. I was actually in the early days, I was uh, a little known fact, but I did a bit of Saturday morning reception work when I was in high school. Um, that and working at the local Wendy's selling milkshakes and hot dogs. So a bit of a sales background there as well. But Look, First National have been a part of our business since the business began, and they're a great group, um, very successful nationally. Um, We just felt the journey and the progression of our team and the journey of the business so far, it was the right time to become independent, and it just feels so good. We really love the new colours and the new brand, but it's really about just, um, I suppose, a a line in the sand moment for us to become really authentic to who we are and who we want to be moving forward. And talking about the authentic and that side of thing, talk about like the Nitschke energy and what we bring and that side. Yeah, yeah. Like we, uh, I think, uh, Sarah, you coined the term, we, we don't want to be real estate wankers officially <laughs> is what it is. But what I it is I may have is, said that once or twice. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's right. But really it's about um, being true to ourselves. So we, we've um, identified as a team um, what our values are. We're a values-driven organisation. Um, and we really, you know, we are authentic, we're genuine, and um, we see our people as, as family uh, and, and our clients as well. And then finally, we're progressive. You know, we're, we're always keeping an eye on the future and not changing things for change's sake, but embracing what comes at us. And if I reflect on, I mean, our journey together <laughs> yeah. to bring you into the podcast, because you've got me in the hot seat. Yeah, but, exactly. I mean, so you've been working with me since 2009, which yeah. is awesome. Um, And so our careers have grown together, which is quite unique. And, you know, for us co-piloting the business as part of the leadership team, um, we, you know, that was something that was always really important to us. And we've had to encounter, we've had a lot of challenges. And um, I think, you know, if I look at my time in the managing director's chair, which um, started really abruptly a few years ago, um, you know, over the last three and a half years or thereabouts, um, it's been intense. We've had a lot of... uh, things that we've had to overcome Mm -hmm. and whilst we might have wanted to rebrand and become independent prior it wasn't the right time now now has been the time that it feels right definitely definitely um it's been a ride (laughs) hasn't it hasn't it um now little birdie has told me uh there's a book in the wings there is (laughs) so without giving too much away can you Give us a little snippet, what's happening. I can, yeah. So it, we are, um, I'm, I'm working alongside um, someone to, to put together a, a story and, and, and really to document the story so far. And for some of our viewers or people tuning in that may not know a lot of what's happened, it, it's been, 
I've had a lot of interesting things happen across my life. <laughs> you think? <laughs> you know, I touched on it before that I'm, I'm, I'm 34. I'm still very young, even though I feel yep. at times like I'm 54. <laughs> um, and, you know, I, where the idea came to write a book was really centred around my kids. So mm -hmm. my wife, Kat, and I, we live locally, as you know, in Little Hampton. We've got two beautiful girls. We've got um, Peyton, who's six, and Harper's just turned four, going on 14. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're awesome, but I really wanted to make sure that I could really um, write a story for them. So mm -hmm. that's actually the audience for the book, is actually my kids. But it's really a lesson, I think, in, in leadership and overcoming obstacles. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, my, I, I've touched on earlier in the podcast, but, you know, I guess touching on a few things that have happened, but, mm -hmm. you know, um, the year 2000, my, my parents um, started the business um, and they, um, you know, a few, years, a few years after that, I was in high school at that time, a few years after that, they, they separated. Um, it was a really nasty separation. So going through as, I guess, a child of divorce and dealing with all of that. Mm -hmm. um, and then as things unfolded, um, my mum had a lot of mental health issues. Um, she, she suffered from bipolar disorder. There was a lot of things that we dealt with as a family. Um, it was a, a really tough time. And yeah. then, um, you know, following on from that, um, you know, and there's obviously a gap in the middle, but um, I, I lost both my parents by the time I was 30. So, you know, my, um, you know, Peyton was just, had just turned one when mum passed away really suddenly. Mm -hmm. um, and then, a lot of people, uh, my dad's a lot more well-known within the community. Uh, they're both great people, but dad sort of had more of the, I guess, um, notoriety, you know, given what he did for a living. Um, and dad sadly passed away in 2008 and he, um, he had a three and a half year battle with bowel cancer. And, um, you know, so dealing with, with that, but it's also behind the scenes, um, there was a lot to manage as mm. a family there. and. It, it's interesting too, and, and this might seem a bit intense to kind of go into <laughs> on the Nitschke podcast because oh, we've, you know... We've had a lot of intense conversations. I still can remember both of those phone calls about your parents. They're like yeah. exactly I mean, you're one of the where first... I was when that happened, like those big moments in life. Yeah, and I think one of the things for those people that know me quite well, I'm really, really passionate about leadership. I really, I, it's something that blows through me. It's hard to under, it, it's hard to explain, but I feel that my journey has really shaped me as a leader. Mm -hmm. I feel really humbled to be in the position to then be leading Nitschke Real Estate into its next next chapter and, and whatever obstacles we may face, I know that we'll overcome them as a group and um, be really united around that. I think, you know, a lot of the time uh, with leadership, um, it's, it, for me, it's always been a feeling of knowing what to do. So mm -hmm. to give, uh, give you a, a really good example of that, you know, um, you, again, you know firsthand, you're quite uniquely <laughs> placed uh, in your own journey around that. But, you know, as, um, as dad's health um, was deteriorating um, when he was leading the business, he unfortunately, um, dad, um, dad's really well known within the real estate space and within the wider Adelaide Hills community. And, very widely respected, um, very popular person. Um, he was very, I guess, speaking as his son, um, I wasn't as close to him as I'd like to be. Mm -hmm. And so I think that was that was really challenging. Yeah. Sort of seeing, knowing behind the scenes how sick dad was. And he, he actually sheltered a lot of people from that. And I've, I've always been so passionate about this business and you know, the clients that we've served and, and the imprint that we've made in the community. Mm. And I was really scared that that was going to be lost through him not being vulnerable enough mm. to share authentic. what he was going and authentic <laughs> comes yeah. into it then, right? Yeah. And that genuine. So it's not, I'm not having a crack at him by any means. I, I love my dad and I miss him dearly, but it's, it's more just, it, it wasn't an accurate reflection of what he was really going through. Mm. And to kind of bring that into the picture here today, um, our team had no idea how sick Dad was. They were aware that he had had cancer, but Dad would always find a way to put a brave face on. He was extraordinarily tough, very strong, yeah. strong man. And I think he missed an opportunity. I think to let people in, shed the armour, mm -hmm. be vulnerable, 
let them know how scared he was, let him know, let people know that he was actually having a really tough time. And I remember in a big leadership moment for me was, um, it was around Father's Day, and in fact it was Father's Day, um, just prior to Dad's passing. And he, um, the, the audience members that may or may not be sort of familiar with how cancer can affect people and what can happen, um, you know, sadly, it, it, he was acting very strangely that day and we could sort of tell like just mentally things weren't quite right and we later found out that Dad's cancer had got to his brain mm. and it, it was at that moment that we knew, look, he, he was fighting bravely but there was a, an outcome that was coming that we had to prepare ourselves for. And when, uh, there's a lot of talk about death on this podcast, yeah, I was but like, it's, we need to bring it back. We do need to bring it back, <laughs> I know. But with mum passing, it was very abrupt. It was yeah. um, out of the blue, very unexpectedly, um, very sad, very hard to process, no warning. With dad obviously suffering a terminal illness, it was much more of a build up. Um, but the leadership moment in all of that for me was that I made the decision to bring the team together. Mm -hmm. um, at that time, I wasn't, um, Dad had never really formally appointed me into an active leadership role, but there was a massive leadership gap there because Dad just wasn't able to deliver on it. He was so sick. So brought the team together and, and let them know about what was going on and um, let them know, you know, the situation so that they could reach out to him and, mm -hmm. and support him better. And Raw and real. Raw and real. Mm -hmm. and, and that I think that vulnerability piece that, uh, I've learned a lot about since, you know, a lot of reading, a lot of study um, is at the core of my philosophy as a leader and, and what we then try and push through our team with being genuine, being authentic, um, shedding the armour, letting people in because if you're vulnerable and you allow yourself to be, people can support you better and you can come together as a group. So that's kind of an, a little bit of a, an insight into what's going to be in the book because I think it's important. I've, you know, for me as a father, I really want my kids to have those values as well. I, I think it's really important. Be a good person first before a good sales agent. Not a real estate wanker, okay. <laughs> you know. <laughs> True. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, you know, and, and so like for a lot of people looking at our business, um, being around, as I said, for 22 years, really proud of our, our history. Mm -hmm they could look at that and go, oh gee, that must have been really easy, just stepping into the family business. I've just inherited this, you know, amazing real that estate empire, the, whatever it was. That was the truth. <laughs> I know, and it really, it wasn't. And unfortunately, the, the company was um, in, in a bit of a mess at that time. And um, there was a, a messy um, previous business partnership that was being resolved and there was um, a lot of, um, it kind of looked pretty on the outside, but there was a lot of things that we had to, to work to fix. And my, um, I was made, uh, I was given the opportunity to be director uh, three days before dad passed away. And then within that week, as you know, was when I got for the first time privy to actually see what was going on under the hood. Yeah. And it was ugly. It was really ugly. So, you know, again, just dropping some nuggets on the podcast <laughs> audience today. We, uh, we had, uh, I think at that time, it was about six or seven weeks of cash left in the business. Yeah, your neck was pretty red at that point. It was, it was pretty <laughs> you're, stressful. You're pretty str yeah, it and a... it's hard because you're going through the grief, uh, obviously of losing dad and, and um, just trying and to understand. earlier. Yeah, not that mom, long, 18 months, months prior. Yeah. like. And I also, my wife and I, you know, we had young kids, we still got young kids, but they're a bit older now. <laughs> But, um, you know, Peyton was, what, three, mm -hmm. um, Harps was seven months or something. So, you know, there was day-to-day -day challenges there. And then to find out that what I thought was a, a really um, well set up and, and run business, perhaps due to many things that had happened um, in Dad's life, particularly in the last 12 months of his life, um, probably weren't set up as well as they could have been. And I, I really wish that he just let me in in that time because I could have helped him. Plan. I could have helped him. And so what we've done ever since is uh, sort out, uh, first of all, being vulnerable from day one. So shedding any form of defense, you know, we're here to let people in, please help us. We want to learn, we want to grow. And, uh, you know, we've um, 
through that journey, we had a mantra very early in the, in the beginning, uh, better before bigger. Mm -hmm. So we just, uh, and, and Sarah, the work that you've done in that space in this business, we wouldn't <laughs> be here today without you. So you, you've worked so, so hard on going, well, what's this next challenge? How can we unpack that to get through that, to, to improve and, and, and get better? So, you know, something that is really unique about Nitschke Real Estate, I, I think being in the industry for a long time, seeing other agencies and what's important to them, is we don't really focus on our competitors at all. Like we respect them and um, there's some great real estate agents in the Adelaide Hills and certainly in South Australia, but we're inherently focused on what's the next thing that's gonna make our business grow. How are we gonna get just that little bit better today yeah. than what we were yesterday? And that's not just um, our, our processes, our, our um, systems and, and how we do it, but it's also the growth path for the people that we have in the business and that we're always focused on that. So, you know, we fast forward from 2018, it was a bit ugly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and I'll definitely unpack that further over time. Um, to, it's a fascinating story. It, like, it is. Um, <laughs> it's very... It's pretty wild. Yeah. It's pretty wild. And always maintain during that time attitude of gratitude. Yeah. Um, and uh, I've got a lot to be grateful for. And um, clearly today, circling back to the rebrand, I, I could not be prouder to be in this, this moment right now. No, it's, um, yeah, it will be exciting when the book's released <laughs> and comes about, but obviously it's really exciting for this next, I guess, chapter as such for us in Nitschke Real Estate and, you know, going forward with our values and, and what we see um, the yeah. future to be and what we would like our people to you know, live up to um, from that side. So we've got a pretty big vision, like, and I don't think we'd be scared to say it. <laughs> um, our our big goal for this business is to be the the biggest real estate agency in the Adelaide Hills by number of sales, properties under management. But not just then the front end of that. It's also for us equally as important um, to be the biggest by way of um, reputation in the community amongst our customers, and of course being an employer. Of choice you know we want our people to genuinely love working here and I think if we can achieve that as our BHAG our big goal yep. <laughs> uh, and I think we will I really do we're on the way we are <laughs> <laughs> we're a step closer today than what we were certainly on Monday with the chaos of the rebrand oh yeah that was a <laughs> I may have been a little bit stressed but yes that's all right. we're recording on a Thursday it's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. So um, I guess circling back and just bringing a bit more lighter. Yeah, I think that's enough depth for the <laughs> yeah, podcast <yeah>. today. <laughs> exactly. Um, what do you do on the weekends? What's fun? Where do you go? Yeah, um, fun for me starts and ends always with my wife and kids. Um, and I'm not just saying that because I know this is recorded and they will see it. Yeah. Um, I love um, my wife, Kat, and um, Peyton and Harper more than anything in the world. So anytime I get an opportunity to hang out with them is always great. And particularly with kids the age that our kids are, um, a day feels like a month in terms of their development. Like things are always changing. So look, we do, uh, I'm, a, I'm a real homebody. Like we don't go out a lot. Um, and I think part of that is, you know, it's fast paced being a business owner, um, being in sales, um, you, you're talking a lot, um, you're, being, you're out and about a lot. So it's nice to sometimes kick back. Um, but um, yeah, it's hanging out with the kids, going to local parks, playgrounds, and um, just having fun. Very good. And uh, favourite bakery. That's where we're going to finish. Favourite bakery. bakery. That's where we're going to finish up today because I reckon... Uh, you reckon and, you know the choice? I reckon I know the choice. We might even be heading there soon. I reckon we might be. Yeah. <laughs> so no, we're very excited that uh, Lobethal Bakery has uh, opened at the end of Gawler Street <laughs> and uh, we've been there one or two times. Feels like a day almost, but um, no, de definitely a great lunch spot. And look, we're really spoiled in the Adelaide Hills. There is yes. so many okay. great venues, great things to do and uh, the variety is what... I think is the secret sauce that is um, the spark of the hills and my people love living here. Yeah, no, awesome. Well, on that note, we better <laughs> go and grab some lunch. But Yes. Um, thanks so much for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Sarah. It's been a pleasure. I'm going to get you back for this. <laughs> no. <laughs> thanks. Awesome.